Okay, so this is a uh, scoping paper for Nigeria. Nigeria manufacturing sector is basically import substituting. Share of manufacturing today stands at uh, 4%, which is abysmal compared to several other countries, including those some 17% in Egypt and uh, even 25% in Ghana. Um, the government wants to grow that size to 8% by 2015 to grow capacity utilization as well. Let me just do some of a quick rundown of history of industrial policy. In the 60s, it was import substituting. Government concentrated on industries, big industries, and uh, including oil refining, dams, and thermal plants. Uh, there was a high degree of technological dependence in the 60s. Uh, second plan tried to redress these limitations, placed emphasis on upgrading local production. Uh, it, it is the first systematic attempt to, to link the industrial sector with agriculture, transport, mining, and quarrying. Uh, there were also a number of ambitious projects in the 60s, iron and steel, cement, salt, sugar, and so on. And again, this period marked the dramatic shift from public sector to private sector. The problem, there are some lingering problems, including the death of financial human capital, human capabilities. This busted the indigenization policy of 1972, which was revised in 1977. The 70s, the mid 70s to 80s, were the height of Nigeria's high boom. Uh, the emphasis remained on public sector investment. Uh, there was easy access to foreign exchange. Many industries became heavily import dependent, and this proved to be their harbor trolls. By the by, the early 80s, there was a global recession that led to foreign exchange scarcity, and uh, many of those industries actually collapsed uh, and exposing the weakness of the import the kind of industrial, structure, industrial strategy that Nigeria embraced. The current structure of, uh, of uh, the current structure of the industrial sector, uh, Nigeria economy has been growing uh, uh, rapidly, especially in recent times, 6.2% in 2009, 7.5% in 2010, and 7.38% in 2011, which fell slightly to 6 point something percent in 2010. 2010. Agriculture, there's still the dominance of the primary sector manufacturing. Uh, share of, my, of primary sector was 70% at independence. That share has slightly decreased, but still remains uh, significant. The decrease shows a sluggish or slow transition from primary to secondary and tertiary, but this is a painfully slow transition. Manufacturing, again, like I said, is very bad in terms of share, 4%. And uh, throughout the period since independence up to now, it has not exceeded 8%. We can have a look at that share here. Uh, foreign, using the World Bank Industrial Census Survey, uh, there are some statistics as far as the industrial sector is concerned. 0.7% uh, of those farms are foreign owned, and 3.2% are exporting. Uh, the average size of farms, large farms are in uh, uh, textiles, 254 for those that are 20 years and above, and uh, again in uh, other manufacturing, and then to a lesser degree in food, food sector. Constraints to farm growth in Nigeria, I mean, straight away you finger electricity outages. There's an insecurity problem in the northern part of the country. The transport, there are problems with our roads. There's a threat of long-term finance. Crime and corruption are pervasive, and uh, this uh, has been hampering uh, growth in the industrial sector. Uh, electricity outages is especially uh, problematic. Uh, it causes damage to machines and equipment for the industrial sector. And many of them have to rely on self-supply. Unfortunately, this escalates their production costs and makes them uncompetitive. In terms of uh, capacity utilization based on the WBIC data, um, average 67.54%. 22.38% of the farms that were surveyed use email facilities. 7.59% uh, for all sectors have functional websites at the time the survey was held. Types of skill ratio of temporary to full time staff is averaged 2%, 0.2%. And the number of years of experience of top managers, 11.18%. This is labor productivity. Uh, foreign owned farms. Uh, and exporting farms in terms of their labor productivity, uh, quite uh, 
uh, significant. Uh, for, for farms that are, it, labor productivity tends to grow with the uh, age of farms, which is, which is striking. For farms that are 20 years and above, it's about 10,198.81%. Value added in billions of Naira for machinery and equipment sector is huge. The electricity sector, electrical sector is also quite colossal. And capital productivity, again, for the food sector is the highest uh, on the log, and uh, uh, others is actually the highest. And for TFP, TFP has averaged uh, around 0.29 to 0.34% across the various subsectors of manufacturing. Uh, quickly, uh, to imagine issues uh, in the industrial sector as I, as I close. The country is in pursuing a comprehensive policy of cluster development uh, in the manufacturing and processing industries. Uh, this is pretty much the way many countries are going now. Clusters in Nigeria, as yes, had traditional clusters over several years, notably in Nnewi and, Ot and uh, Otigua. And the uh, government, based on the relative success stories that these clusters are, government is thinking of replicating it across many states of the country. So the idea is to create industrial parks for large manufacturing companies. And this is supposed to cover a vast area of 3,050 square kilometers. The interesting thing this time is that this park will be created based on geographical zones to focus on the development of resources in which each zone has comparative and competitive advantage. Actually, Nigeria has these zones. And there's actually a, a, a document that chronicles the resources that are uh, prevalent or that are present in those zones. And it's on the basis of that that each of those economic zones are supposed to exploit those resources as a basis for industrial takeoff. So that is a crucial component of National Industrial Revolution Master Plan that the country is implementing. Another emerging issue is infrastructure. Government is, the Nigerian government is tackling the infrastructure problem uh, very forcefully. And it's actually using an integrated approach Ultimately, the idea is to have an intermodal transport network. Uh, so there are activities going on across the power sector, the rail sector, the road sector, and even the, the, as far as the seaports is concerned. Nigeria's notorious uh, uh, electricity behemoth, uh, which is uh, the PHCA, is, is, is literally, is technically dead now because it has been unbundled into 18 distribution companies. And the uh, government is uh, developing hydro, thermal, solar, nuclear energy simultaneously. And uh, the idea is to have uh, electricity supply to rise from the, uh, the present abysmal 3,443 3, megawatts to go up to 10,000 megawatts in 2014 and 20,000 megawatts in 2016. <coughs> The rail sector has been moribund uh, for, for a long, long time. And there's a lot of activity here as well. Government has been rehabilitating uh, the various rail tracks, and building standard and narrow gauges, turning some of them into dual carriageways. And importantly, uh, some crucial railway lines, like the Lagos Canal Line, which are two commercial industrial, these are two industrial hubs, and the Port Harcourt Maiduguri, because it's also a very significant industrial hub in Nigeria, have resumed personal service and haulage of goods. The road sector, there's also some, a uh, lot of things that are going on in that sector as well. Government has been turning many roads into dual carriageways, uh, and uh, indeed, According to the minister, about 120 billion was spent in the last two years rehabilitating roads and so on. So there are, there are a, a, not, a lot of things going on by way of building infrastructure with the intent to ensure that uh, uh, this critical gap or deficiency that has stalled or slowed down industrial takeoff that is addressed comprehensively. And, uh, and systematically. So that is uh, the paper. 
I want to thank you.